In this video, we'll use WebSense Triton AP data to configure a drip DLP rule uh, to detect the slow leak of sensitive information across any channel, whether it's network, email, or uh, you know endpoint channel like removable media or network attached storage or anything like that. Uh, this will be a brief demo. We'll just use email as an example, but I'll show how this policy rule is set up uh, and we'll show you those other channels uh, during that. But to start, what I've done is logged into my Triton AP data console. Uh, I have no incidents over the last seven days, so we sort of have a clean slate here. And then what I'm going to do is go and show how that policy and that rule was set up. Uh, and we'll talk a little bit about what drip DLP means and why you might use it. But uh, inside of my policies here, I have a PCI policy, and I've actually created a custom credit card drip rule. And uh, this is, again, something that you can modify an existing one or create a new one. Uh, what we'll do is look at the one that I created. and You'll start here, this is sort of the name, and I put a little description in here to remind me of what it is, but it's a rule to detect the slow leak of credit card numbers over a short period of time. And I'm actually in the, under the condition using the built-in WebSense predefined content classifier for credit cards, and I'm just looking for a single, uh, you know, at least one unique credit card being seen uh, per transaction or, or per, you know, transmission. And then the severity in action is really where drip DLP is set up. Now by default, a uh, policy rule from WebSense will have the create an incident for each matched condition, which will have a slightly different user interface. And that'll catch, in this case, a single credit card number and audit it, or a single credit card number and block it, or five or more credit card numbers and then block it with you know notification or some rule like that, where it's really just looking for that one condition being met. Uh, Drip DLP, on the other hand, looks for the accumulation of matches of those conditions before creating an incident uh, and, and an action plan based on that. And a good example of why you might want a Drip DLP rule in the context of credit card numbers is um, if you are using you know, Web DLP, if a, if a user goes to Amazon and submits their personal credit card number for a purchase, you don't want to block that. Um, or if they send you know, a secure email, they send a credit card number to their spouse or to somebody maybe they're doing a transaction with, uh, you, know, you don't want to block that uh, or necessarily even audit it. So most block rules or audit rules for credit card numbers will look for you know, a larger breach of information, you know, maybe a database of credit card numbers or a file that has three or four or five or ten credit card numbers in it. Um, and once somebody understands that that's how the rule works, uh, if they know that, they might say, hey, I found out that I can leak one credit card in an email you know, to my, my home, and then another one, and then another one, and another one, and then over the long period of time, I've dripped tons of credit card numbers, but I've never hit that threshold of two or three or four credit card numbers per file or per email um, to you sort of trigger the alert. So drip DLP is a, a good rule that you can add that does that. And we'll walk through what that means, and I apologize for the long explanation there, but what we're going to do is accumulate matches before creating an incident. And we're going to look, and this is just a test case example, you might want to increase this, but we're going to look at all matches of those conditions, which in this case is credit card numbers, and I'm just going to look over a five minute period of time, but you can expand this out and say I want to look at people leaking information and accumulate it over a week uh, or, or a day or an hour or uh, any of the uh, options that are in there. And what I'm going to look for is once a, a third condition is met, so once the third credit card number is leaked within five minutes, I'm going to go ahead and, and mark that as a medium incident, and I'm going to audit it in the audit log as well as send a notification out to my admin email, which I actually have up here uh, with an Outlook web access uh, window, so we'll see that. Um, and then we're basically going to continue to monitor after, after the last credit card is is sent for five minutes and we need to once that five minutes clears we'll reset the timer but you can you can increase that as well um, to kind of give you a ramp down time um, we won't really show that but that's there and under the advanced once I submit a or in this case send a fifth email with a credit card number in it we're actually going to go ahead and block that in an email a block is a quarantine but it'll get audited as well so once it's you know the fifth or more credit card we'll start blocking but you have the flexibility to you know do a combination of different things uh, starting with audit and then you know maybe going to more aggressive things like block and again this is just an example under the source this is going to apply to all users all groups all computers on my on my network uh, as expected and under destination i'm just going to do i'm going to show network email which is using a email security gateway uh, appliance um, but we can also you know monitor this over web or any of the endpoint channels uh, including going to a printer so maybe you can print in this case two credit card numbers, but once you start printing a third one within a five minute period, we'll do that audit and notify. And then of course, endpoint applications, 
sorry about that hover over there so we'll look for you know CD burners clipping software package software which is like uh, you know WinZip or WinRAR 7-zip those types of things encryption software there's cloud software in there as well like Dropbox and Google Drive endpoint removable media which would be USB and CD burning endpoint LAN which is network storage so pretty straightforward that policy is already deployed um, so I'll just sort of back out of that and we'll go back into our reporting tab here and I'm going to go ahead and go over to a machine that's uh, let's logged in here, and uh, this is the George Washington uh, G Washington at BB Labs user. And on my desktop, I have five credit card receipts. Now these don't have to be attachments, um, but I'm just using attachments for the sake of ease. But if this is sent in a, a text window in, in Skype and that's being monitored, or if this is sent in the email as the body, uh, we will still detect it. But I'm going to use attachments here. So I have a credit card number here for Brian Smith, and I've got five of them. Uh, this one's for Peter Kim, you know, ninety-eight dollars. So different credit card numbers, etc. So I'm going to send off all five of these to my personal email. You might see those come in at the top. And uh, again, these are supposed to go out, uh, and it's the third one we're going to, you know, audit and notify on. And then on the, uh, you can see it's in my sent box, and I'll, I'll wait for it to sort of, you know, travel through the, the gateways and the internet, um, and we'll show you these emails actually arrived to uh, to that Gmail account. Uh, towards the end of this. I'll go ahead and send the second one. You can see actually that first email just came in. And this was the third one. So this should trigger the audit and notify. Which again, audit and notify still allows it as permitted traffic, but it now makes the admins uh, aware of it. So I'll press send now. And uh, I would, I'll actually hear an email go off, and I can actually see it come up over here. But uh, at 1040, just just right now, uh, we we got our our notif notification here that sender George Washington had a policy breach on this email subject number three. We can see some of the information. We can see you know some hidden information here. Um, was the credit card drip rule? Um, so that's exactly what we wanted to see. There's three in here from, from an earlier test, but uh, that's what we want to see. If I refresh my audit log now, I'll actually see all three uh, events that came in here. Uh, the lows uh, are the actually kind of the cookie crumbs of those first ones that we were sort of monitoring, but the medium one is the one that triggered it. So if I go here, I can see all the information, George Washington, you know, who his manager is, where he sent it. It was permitted because that's what the policy rules you know, dictated. And I can actually see the, the forensic file here if I want to download it and look at it um, on you know, the admin computer. I can do that. I can see it's the Jane Doe you know, credit card receipt number three. Um, and we can see in the earlier transmissions that you know, we, didn't, we didn't audit uh, that transaction. Uh, we have the cookie crumbs in it from here, and we, we've stored that information here, but we didn't keep the attachment. But uh, these are you know, the, the lower incident events that, that took place before it. However, now that we've actually triggered the rule, um, or we've triggered you know three or more, when I send the fourth one, um, credit card receipt number four, you know we'll send another email out because we're still above that threshold, and I just heard the you know the ding for that. So if I come in here now at 10:42, now I can see the the second one has come in, uh, which is credit card receipt number four. We're still auditing that. Now on this fifth one, this is where the block policy comes in. So if I attach that for the fifth time, now of course, because it's a quarantine, I won't get a block message on my computer and it'll sit in my sent items bucket. But when I go over to my Triton manager here and press refresh, I'll see the fourth one, which is a medium event because it's after the third one. And I'll actually see this high that was you know, quarantined. So this email never arrived to the destination. We can see what the, you know, it was the, the fifth incident found. So the disposition here was to quarantine it. I've got the credit card number there. I've got that forensic file here I can go ahead and open. And uh, when I go over to, you know, my computer and, and look at Gmail here, you can see I have one, two, three, and four, but I do not have the, the fifth email. Um, because that's quarantine. Now as an admin, I can go back to uh, my demo environment here. 
I can go back now and, you know, I could remediate this and, and release it as a quarantine. But at this point, I think I've got enough evidence that George Washington is slowly leaking, you know, information, you know, credit card, customer credit card information to his buddy over here on Gmail one at a time. Uh, and we would go ahead and have a discussion with him and uh, determine exactly what, what he was doing. But that really concludes this demo on uh, Drip DLP. I hope it was helpful.